welcome one and all. It's time for a battle report in the old world. The oldest grudge known to mankind, Andy versus Rem. Also, dwarves versus wood elves. And Mr. Remington, who should be seated over here somewhere, hello. Hello, Andy, 2D6, we're back. Yes, thanks for joining us for this momentous occasion. Not only is it the second game of the old world that we've played, but at Warhammer World as well. That's right. So you're going to see some terrific uh, table and battle and, of course, expertly painted models and tactical prowess. And you're also going to see some mediocre terrain in terms of gameplay as well. <laughs> yes, we are going to complain about the state of the terrain uh, for the old world at Warhammer World, and hopefully they're going to remedy that by the time they start running events there. Because it's right. not an ideal situation, is it? Well, I remember back in the day, they had a whole sort of Kemri Pyramid Desert location uh, diorama that you could play on. That was pretty cool. But these days, it's just, it's pretty, uh, the, the choice is pretty uh, dire, really. You've got, you've got a few woods and uh, a couple of hills that you can't really use. Yeah, but a couple of hills that are difficult to navigate and forests that the trees don't come out of. So you can't yeah. really navigate round them or through them particularly easily. Yeah, they're kind of stuck on with cement. Um, but there you go. Um, but yeah, this was a five-hour game. It took us five hours to do this with no... Hey, hey, hey. Do you, saying it took us five hours. I think it you'll find me. I think you'll find my turns took about twenty minutes at most each time, and your turns took up the rest of that time. Yeah, so we're going to condense it all down into a much shorter battle report, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Yes, yeah, so let's see. We've got a, a packed house in the chat already. I see, including Bad Squido Games. I know that Annie is keeping her eye on Old World with ghouls as a, a potential army. We've Ooh. got Raphael, we've got Mad Flail, we've got Wraith. Yeah, packed house in there. So right, let's yeah. let's drop the thumbnail. And the first thing you can see is, of course, the star of the show, the dwarves, who have been delightfully touched up with a brush. So we've got a mixture of old and... I, I was almost going to say new then, and then I realised, actually, even the newest units are over a decade old now. So they are all old. Some of them older than others, though, and you can see the orange arrow to guide your eyeballs around. So I'll go through my list first, and then after this, Mr. Remington has provided me with some high-quality images of his army, uh, unit by unit. So he's going to give you a very long-winded description of all of his units and their abilities, no doubt. So, the first thing I've gone for is a legendary dragon slayer, who you can see atop the hill there. And I have given the dragon slayer... Let's see, have I given him any runes? The Master Rune of Swiftness, which gives Strike First, which against Elves is particularly handy if you go against one of the Elven units that doesn't also have Strike First, because they do have very high initiative and Dwarves do not. Now, the Slayer has initiative 4 actually, so it's not that bad, but against Elves that's basically like a sloth swinging at a cheetah. So... Then we've got a king, who you can see here in one of the units, on an oath stone. So not only does he have an oath stone, he's also got the rune of passage, which will allow the king and his unit to move through terrain quite easily without any kind of hindrance. So that's nice. And a rune of speed just adds a teensy bit of initiative, just so if they do get a charge off with that bonus combined with the rune of speed, the king maybe can strike first against an elf. Wouldn't that be something to behold? Then, the next character, we've got a runesmith, who is really useful for buffing up the unit that he's in, uh, because he gives them armor bane 2, which is really good for getting through armor saves, obviously, so a little runesmith there, and also very good for dispelling, having runesmiths just out there on the front lines. Speaking of dispelling, we've got... The Anvil of Doom, which not only does it dispel at a plus three, which is nothing to be sniffed at, it also has a few spells of its own. Which... Overpowered. Oh, you're saying the Anvil of Doom is overpowered? Well, it is limited to one. Uh, I think it's limited to one. 
and you've got the various runes you can strike so you can move your units a bit further, you can improve their armor saves, you can fire a magic missile at the enemy, all kinds of wonderful things that the Anvil of Doom can do with a rune lord on it. Then we've got the engineer who is really useful for re-rolling things like artillery dice that maybe come up with a number you don't want for a cannon or re-rolling the hit rolls for a shooty unit. So, Overpowered. just all round, handy thing to have in the list an engineer if you're taking some war machines. Now, moving on to the next page of my army list here, and we've got rangers who are on proper skirmish bases this time, got their own individual bases, and there are ten of them, and they have a command. I think I've given them a musician, even though they do not have a model of a musician, which is obviously cheating. And uh, Andy, what does a musician do? Well, musicians are useful for, if the, the combat is tied, then a musician would swing it in the favour of the unit that has one. And they can also be used for reforming as well, I think. Uh, don't they, can they help with plus one leadership if you're trying to rally a unit that's running away or something? That might be it. Yeah. Yeah, so something like that. So it's a little bit of help they can get there. Then we've got 18 dwarf warriors, just your standard hand weapon and shield dwarves, but of course they are joined by the runesmith, so they're going to hit a little bit harder than usual. And then we've got 14 thunderers. Now these don't actually have a command, so just ignore the fact that there's a banner and a musician there, because putting command in a shooting unit is a little bit risky because they're probably going to get killed and then just give away extra points for banners being murdered. So are they overkill against wood elves that don't have very good saves? Maybe. But we shall see, they do have decent range, and hopefully they can shoot a few elves off the table. We move it out of the core now, so those were the core units, those three, into the special units, and we have 17 hammerers. And you'll notice here, rather than just sticking to five wide on all my units, I've got a little bit of variety here. The hammerers have gone six wide with the king in there, so there are 17 of those hammerers, and I've given them the Master Rune of Hesitation on the banner, which means that anyone charging them will not count as charging for any of their bonuses. Now, here's a thing that's interesting though, because the hammerers have a rule that means that they get an extra attack when they are charged. So I'd have to check on the wording of the Master Rune of Hesitation, but so hopefully it wouldn't negate that, because that would be silly. And then we've got a gyrocopter, which is over here on the left, very very handy with the standard steam gun for blasting away wood elves. I think that's what it was designed for, so we'll see if it gets that done in this game. It was a little bit of a disappointment in the first game we tried, but hopefully I've learned my lesson and I'll make a better use of the gyrocopter this time around. Then we've got a cannon up on the hill there, and the cannon has the rune of forging and the rune of reloading, so old school Warhammer fans will know rune of forging, lets you reroll the artillery dice, and rune of reloading means that if it suffers a misfire and shouldn't be able to fire in the next turn because of it, then actually it can, because it's got the rune of reloading. And that's a very cheap rune as well. So basically, Andy, your war machines will pretty much always fire and they, nothing will go wrong. They are quite reliable having an engineer and putting runes on them, but they do become expensive at that level. Right. So you pay the points for that reliability. And cannons aren't the same as they used to be back in the day. They don't do D6 wounds anymore, so you're not going to be one-shotting a big monster anymore. They're just D3 plus 1 wounds, so it's more reliable middling amount of wounds, which I think everyone is in favour of, because you don't want your dragon being one-shot off the table by a cannon, but you also don't want it doing a pathetic one wound on an ogre. Then we've got 10 miners right there, so obviously miners notable for... Uh, not starting on the table, and they'll come in from one of the table edges, and the minor veteran champion Prospector, there we go, Prospector, has a steam drill, which means that they get to re-roll when determining whether they enter the table that turn or not. So, they're going to be getting into the Wood Elf back lines, hopefully, causing havoc and mischief. Then we've got two rare units, we've got the Organ Gun, and the app I've been using to build the list with doesn't give you any options to put runes on an organ gun, so I'm going to assume that you can't. Because it's a newfangled technology and they wouldn't dare put runes on it. 
then we've got five. How would, you make, how would you make it better anyway? I mean, it's vastly overpowered. Well, people are actually saying the organ gun isn't as good as it used to be, you know? Jesus. Yeah, and then we've got five iron drakes with a troll hammer torpedo, which is kind of like a little mini cannon. So, we've got quite a lot of shooting ability and some decent hard-hitting combat units as well. So, on to the forces of Remington. So, do you want to tell us about each unit as you've got them photographed in this beautiful light box situation? Yes. So, welcome to the one of the most beautiful armies you'll ever see, surely. And uh, all these units are currently unavailable, but um, I'm sure quite a bit, quite a few of them will become available when the Wood Elves get their big battalion box and gubbins coming out. Uh, probably, I don't know, in a month or two, maybe more. Within six months. I you would hope that. within six months. They've got the orcs that are on pre-order now, and then it's the dwarves in a few weeks. So we don't know. So uh, this is my general. It's, uh, it's, it's a glade captain. With uh, I've given, <clears throat> I've given her a. Gr I think it's a her actually. From the model. It yeah, appears that way. Yeah. She's got a great weapon, light armor, swift, swift shiver shards. That's the tongue twister, isn't it? Um, basically, that allows her to shoot um, double the amount of shots, which is kind of cool because she's strength four. Um, but yeah, that's actually kind of handy against dwarves because in the first game you were often struggling to wound any of the dwarves, weren't you, with your puny strength three bows? Yeah, yeah. this is a thing in Wood Elves. You really need strength four shooting, but you don't get it from any of the normal troops um especially against dwarves because they're toughness four so you're gonna need fives to wound very very hard plus dwarves have always got good armor we'll come to that in a bit um yes the glade captain i think i in the end i refrained from making the battle standard bearer I, I think even though she's holding one um she holds the arrow of kurnos which we'll get to when we start the game the next one is my spell singer this is a level two wizard and I rolled the two spells under Illusion, which were Spectral Doppelganger, which means um, when she fights, <laughs> she casts this spell. Another version of her can fight as well, so she'll get double the amount of attacks at her profile. Um, it's not really a spell I wanted for the spell singer. I probably would have preferred this spell to be on a more fighter unit. But that's what I rolled, and I rolled another spell and swapped it out for the signature illusion spell glittering robe which gives her and any new unit she joins a minus one to hit um from you know from shooting or from combat so that's kind of cool very nice um, yeah oh this is my uh you know this is my best model i think in terms of fighting this is the shadow dancer he has the Spear of Loic, which gives him a heroic click, uh, killing blow. Uh, and a strength, he has strength four, but the Spear of Loic gives you plus one strength. So now it's strength five. He's a level one wizard, and I rolled battle magic. I got battle magic, and he got hammer hand, which is kind of a good combat, um, a combat attack, which I forgot to use in the whole battle. Oh, well, what a shame. <laughs> he also holds the Paymaster. Paymaster's coin, which that gives you a re-roll of ones in combat. So in combat, he's going to be amazing. Next unit there is a um, character, I mean, is the Waystalker. Um, he's got light armor, extra weapon, but I don't really want to get him into combat. Having said that, he's got arcane bodkins, which do uh, minus two uh, on armor saves. And he has the Bow of Lauren, which gives him... Uh, double the amount of t attacks on his shooting profile. Very nice. <clears throat> got um, some so stabby here dudes have, here now, haven't we? Yes, yeah, they've got the core core units here. These are, we've got ten, ten Eternal Guards with shields, uh, banner musician, and champion. Nothing exciting about them, is there? I, I really like them, though. They're very nice models. Yeah, yeah thank you, Andy. Thank you. And oh, some right. uh, some yeah. old school models right here then. Yeah, these are Scarlox Wood Elf archers. So these are going to be my Glade Guard. Old metal miniatures from 1987, I believe. 
Maybe they'll bring these out. I don't know. Will they? Well, you never know. They could bring them yeah. back on made to order. That would be pretty crazy, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, so I can't remember. Did I put full command in this? I don't think I did. I think I might have just paid for a uh, mission to give them plus one in case they run away. Because I thought that's likely to happen if they suffer too many casualties. So, um, yeah, we've got a unit of uh, 18 of them. I can't remember if it's 18 or 16. Should have it here, really. Let me just read. Um, do, 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 do. Got my notes here. The picture looks like 14. I think there's really 18, but it's just, you know, just in that picture, there's 14. So, um, yeah, there you go. Oh, that's another picture. And now we've got some really cavalry. Good. Yeah, we've got eight glade riders with a lot of um, pot pourri and stuff that I found when I was walking my dog in the woods. Um, I think I've given these guys a standard bearer just to help with any combat resolution. Um, these guys, unlike the other um, missile units in my armies, these guys are armed with hagbane tips with their arrows. That means they have poison attacks, basically. So if I roll a six to hit, it's an auto wound. Yeah, so that's definitely a way that you can get through that dwarven high toughness. Definitely. And I was thinking maybe these could be really good war machine killers, right? Yep, um, toughness seven. Yep. You don't have to roll against toughness, and they don't really, I don't think they have saving throws, but I know the Anvil of Doom probably has a ward save. Even so, these probably my best bet for defeating war machines in a hit and run attack. I've got some more cavalry now. Yeah, well, these are first timers for me. Good evening, Stu Gibson. Hello, mate. These are the first time I've got to use these, uh, these wonderful ladies. Uh, these are. The Sisters of Thorn. So this unit um, does have uh, a magic spell that it rolls for. And the, the spell I rolled for is not the one I really wanted. <laughs> so, But it was better than the signature spell. So I gave them elemental magic. And these rolled the, uh, the teleport spell, which you need a 10 plus to cast. Uh, and it has a 9 inch range. And you basically, you can move a unit... 12 inches away from where it started but it can't how we read the rules was you can't charge we'll get to that later but yeah they've got poison attacks they've got uh, black bar javelins so they've got a shooty attack there um yeah they've got a four up ward save as well which is dead handy because they don't have an armor save that's quite fortunate then <laughs> now we've got some very old school looking models here as well Yes, yeah, so you look at these heroic characters ready to defend the forest from those uh, beardy weirdies, those dwarves not clearing up after themselves when they go for walks in the forest. Well, these are the war dancers. I think these are probably my favourite unit in the Wood Elf Army, so I'm really glad they've come back. Um, these are the really like pure fighting unit. Um, you choose what dance you want to do when they get into combat and some give you extra attacks some another dance gives you a ward save um, they're the two you usually use at least uh, I do I've given them extra hand weapons so they get double the amount of attacks um, they have furious charge so when they charge they get an additional attack on that turn so that means they're going to have three attacks each when they charge um, the Blade Singer is the champion in the middle. He's going to have an extra attack because he's a champion. That is a lot of attacks for this game system. You often see elite units steaming into the enemy and only having one attack each. So that's quite a big deal. Yeah, so you might be thinking, well, what's the downside? Well, the downside is they don't have any armor. They do have talismanic tattoos, which gives them a six up ward save. And the other downside is that they're only strength three and toughness three. So I'm probably going to get a lot of hits in, but I'm going to need to work roll fives uh, to wound Andy with no minuses to armor. So that's the downside of them, guys. These guys are my favorite. I my think you've said that about every unit so far. I love them. These are the Wild Riders of Kurnos. And um, these guys also have Furious Charge and Frenzy. Um, so 
they can go plus two on the attack when they charge. Um, so you can see why Andy did that little rune on those dwarves to stop bonuses on the charge, which kind of sucks. But these guys are great. What's the downside is that you don't really want to be in a prolonged combat, these guys, and you don't want to get charged if you can help it. Um, and there's only five of them, and they're really expensive. And I've given them shields, which means with their light armor, they're only going to have a five-up save. That's the only thing that sucks. But they are very fast. They can move through cover. They cause fear. Um, they've got the frenzy, which means they have to charge when they can at the nearest unit. And they do have the counter charge rule, which I think only applies against other cavalry. Yes, so that's not going to be coming up with the dwarves. And they have swift stride, so and talismanic tattoos too. So they are. Oh, these guys um, are my way watchers. Um, so these are sort of the elite archer unit. Um, they can be they can be scouts, they're skirmishers. Um, these have an extra bow skill compared to normal glade guard, and um, so it means they're basically without any penalties. They're hitting on twos, but again with the weak strength, still gonna have to roll fives to wound. Though I've got six of these guys in my army, looking to cause some trouble. Got some more infantry here, some more modern looking infantry. Yeah, I thought I'd really want to try these guys out. These are the Wildwood Rangers, and they get double the wounds inflicted if if it's on a fear-causing enemy. They're very good against monsters, things like ogres, things perhaps things like undead. Um, but the reason I've brought them is because they're going to have plus two strength with their big wildwood glaives so that could be great against andy's high toughness high armored warriors so i've got to get these guys into combat got to get them striking first if i can which seems likely against slow, uh, slow dwarves and um yeah scythe through some dwarves now what about this centerpiece here yeah look at that beauty that is my tree man and um he's not a tree man ancient so he's not a wizard um Six, five wounds is it? I think we've got five wounds, toughness. Let me get my stats up. The high, you know, the big, the big boy in my army, really. I need to get this guy into combat, get Andy tied up with it, and you know, get him, get him doing some real nasty work. Yeah, if you the, could, uh, if you can get this guy into combat with any low strength unit, they're going to really struggle against him. Yeah, he's immune to psychology. Obviously a large target, so and he's not going to get any minuses um, to shoot him. He's got regeneration. He's got the stomp attacks. He's got the tree whack attack. Uh, six weapon skill. Strength five, toughness six, five wounds. He is quite slow with initiative two. And he does have a shooting attack, which I completely forgot to use all battle, which is called strangle roots, which could have really helped, but... It's a classic Remington move, though. And we've yeah. got another angle of him there. Very nice indeed. And is that just the same unit again? The Yeah, I think yeah, that's the same. Watchers. I think that's the whole army now you've seen. Hope you enjoyed those close-ups, because you can't often see that when you're just photographing table. Yes, stuff. there we go. And you get another little look at my army then, see how that stacks up. So when I was looking through your army, the main things that concern me, obviously, anything with poisoned attacks. Because some of these dwarf units, particularly the hammerers, they don't actually have the best armor saves in the world. So if you can auto wound them and bypass their one defensive attribute, which is their toughness, then that could be quite a big deal. So that was my main worry. What were you concerned about looking at my army? Um, well, I, you say they're, they're low armored, but what is their armor save? The hammerers are only five plus. They only have heavy armor. Do, can you give them Gromwell armor? I don't think you can upgrade them. You might be able to give them shields, actually, but they wouldn't be using them in combat. Yeah, but what they do have is two attacks if they charge, right? If you charge them, they get two attacks, yes. If I charge them, they have two attacks. So really, I don't want to be charging that unit. I just want to be trying to shoot them. So um, that's what I'm going to try and do, at least. Um, I'm not too concerned about Andy's dwarf unit on the left, because I know they're going to be slow. 
and it just seems like a bit of a waste of time me trying to get them when they're not really any threat to me so the biggest threat obviously the war machines on top of the hill uh because there's an engineer with them they're just gonna uh if i stay back which is the obvious wood elf tactic stay back and shoot or surround and shoot shoot and flee uh if i stay back these are, uh they, i'm i'm really caught against those guys so i wasn't sure whether to hang back or to go forward because half my army are combat units so for them to be effective i need to get them in combat so that's what i was concerned about the anvil of doom i didn't know how i was going to get rid of that but hopefully the poison attacks from my uh, glade guard can do something you can see the Emblem of Doom there. Now, the Emblem of Doom is the one unit in this army that I hadn't gone back in with a paintbrush onto yet. I'm actually doing that now. It's on my painting table getting some extra highlights. But I thought it, it, it looks pretty cool anyway. It's good. What's the, the thing I fear the most about the Emblem of Doom is that it's got this shooting attack, hasn't it? What was what that? Magic missile, missile? Yes, it was the 2d6 strength 4 hits, I think. So that wounds Wood Elves quite easily. Do you have to roll to hit, or is it just... No, it's just how many hits you get. Obviously, the spell has to go off first. Right. So that's kind of like the hit roll. Well, that is tough, man. It makes me think, perhaps I should have brought a level 4 wizard. Yes. People are saying that you can't leave home without at least one level 4 wizard in this game, if you have access to them. Yeah, so the reason why, according to me anyway, they might be wrong, is that, you know you're going to get spells off and it's going to be better to dispel but also you're going to get your choice of spells or so you're much more likely to get the spells you want because you can't choose spells you see you have to roll for them now i think you'll agree these dwarves look a lot better with their eyeballs painted and the highlights than they used to yeah you've done good there do you need a magnifying glass when you i don't yet but occasionally when I take a picture of something zoomed in later on, I'll think, oh no, look at that bit that I've missed, or I've got a bit of the wrong colour in the wrong place there. I'll have to go back and fix yeah. that. I must admit, and I never used to like these plastic dwarves, but I think you've done a great job with these, and uh, you might have changed my opinion on them. They do have a lot more character when you can paint the faces up. Mm -hmm. And there's Mr. Remington's army out there in en masse on the table and yeah. some less impressive photos which i'm not going to dwell on because we've already seen the very nice yeah. close-ups and we're going to go into deployment so first of all you'll notice the terrain and we did have a bit of an issue with the warhammer world terrain they don't really have any walls or uh, little houses or anything like that they ha had a couple of hills and some woods where the trees don't come out so uh, yeah, yes. at the back there, at the top of the picture, you can see that's the free wood that the wood elves get, and that's where I placed it, for better or worse. I'm told I should have placed it on the side to protect my shooting units. Also, before the game, when we were placing the terrain, I did ask you where we're going to have the hills, and you did vote for the deployment zone, which is a bold, it's a bold move against dwarves. I, I did. Um... And so Andy straight away plonked, I knew Andy was going to plonk all his war machines on the hill. So it means they could basically see everything, but they can also be seen, um, which means they can be shot without penalties, apart from being, of course, long range. But um, yeah, it's, it is a shame they, there isn't that much scenery, diverse scenery available anymore. Yeah, hopefully they'll have that remedied soon and they'll get some really old world specific terrain because you would expect fences and hedges and a river and that kind of thing in the old world, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean those trees, those forests you see, yeah, they look great, but you can't actually take the trees out um, and they're like cemented on. So it's, you can't actually put your models in the wood very well. Um, but I think next time we'll probably bring our own terrain, right? We certainly can do that, yes. Uh, Stu this says, is how we, "This is how we deployed, isn't it?" Yes, but Stu says, "Do Warhammer World have any fancy scenic tables for the old world yet?" Yeah, I haven't seen any. No, they'll come though. I'm sure they'll they'll make one or two up. Yes, yeah, so this is the deployment, and one thing you'll have to note is the units that have the ability to deploy outside of the deployment zone. I kind of haven't deployed very far out because that would be my rangers, and that's your unit here, isn't it? Yeah, they're the Waywatchers, yeah, on the side there. Yeah, so we both oh, had yeah, one uh, unit. Yeah, yeah. 
Both had one in the unit that could do that, and once I learned that Mr. Remington also had one, I looked at my deployment and thought, if I don't put a unit here, he's just going to drop them right there. And that's going to be yeah. very annoying to deal with. I'm going to have to turn something around and go after them, which is going to be yeah. a hassle. I maybe send the Slayer after them, but he'd just get shot to bits because he's naked yeah. with his butt hanging out. So I thought, yeah. I'll just have to sacrifice what I was going to do with these. I would have liked to have put them maybe here and use them to go after your archers. Uh, but I thought, plug up the gap so that these guys can't actually fit in my back line. So you ended up having to deploy them out here. Yeah, I think I placed first and I put my Glade Guard on the hill there. We've got 32 inch range shooting. And uh, yeah, so then Andy put all his warriors outside of my range. <laughs> As you can see there, like... Um, so yeah, then I was like, oh, where do I put my you know, my cavalry? If I put them on the edges, if I put it on the right edge, as you're looking there, uh, where the way watchers are, then they could get shot easily with the Iron Drakes, the cannon, the organ gun, and the Anvil of Doom. And if I put them on the far left, they're going to be too far away to get into combat. Um, so, you know, hindsight's 20 20, isn't it? But um, yeah, I put them in the middle. I thought, you know what? If I just get all, if I just shoot him on the sides and then do some kind of mad dash in the middle, maybe I can take out them rangers, um, charge or shoot, shoot, shoot a few of those hammers out, take them out. And then um, that was the that's as far as my plan went. I think. Well, I was like, I'm too far away from him to do anything here. My plan, because this hill is obviously nice and spacious, I've got all my shooting units on there, apart from the rangers, and I suppose the gyrocopter counts as well with its gun. But we've got most of the shooting here, mostly firing into this mass of elven flesh over here, and the hammerers on one flank the warriors on the other flank. So this is the, the little castle situation here. And if you charge into any of those front units, then you're yeah. going to get the pincer movement coming in and protecting yeah. the flank of my hammerers. We've got the rangers and the right. gyrocopter, depending on how Mr. Remington plays it, obviously, they're most likely to go and hassle these archers with the gyrocopter because that's quite a juicy target for them. You can fit a lot of them under that flame template. And if they turn around and start shooting at the Toughness 5 gyrocopter, they're going to find it difficult to wound it, and they're not shooting my more vulnerable troops down here at the same time. True. Now, you see the bulk of my Wood Elf army is at the back there. They are at long range, and most of them are in the dead wood that uh, you, you can't quite see. But that gives them minus two to hit for most damage stuff. So they are protected round one. Yes, you do have a bit of protection at the start of the game there. But you are going to be rapidly moving out of all these woods if you want to engage. Yes. Uh, it's debatable whether I should have come out of engaged. Maybe I should have just took pot shots at you. What do you think of I this cinematic shot from the artillery battery wow. looking at the blurry masses? And they're panicking. That guy at the back is absolutely terrified. There we go. Coming to him. What else brought That's into focus shot. there? There Great shot. So, should we should we go with the start of the game and the arrow of Kurnos, maybe, Andy? Yes, because that is the first act of the game. The Wood Elves cashing in some of yes. their quality for potentially going first in exchange for firing off a shot. So, do you want to talk about how that went? So, my general holds the arrow of Kurnos, which is basically an automatic hit uh, on the opposing player's general. But it's only a strength three hit, so you, you know you're gonna have to roll quite high to wound, and it's no armor save allowed. Now you think, oh, that sounds a bit unfair. It's kind of great though. Um, if I do choose to fire the arrow of Kurnos, it means I plus I have plus one on the dice roll. Um, minus one on your dice minus roll. Minus one, yeah. So it's it's less likely that I will go first. But I don't mind because I'm I'm out of range of most of his shooting. And I thought this could be quite good. You also roll a, a six to wound as well, so you do put a wound onto my general right at the start. There is his wounds, he's got two left. Fantastic. Onto the so king. That was very, very encouraging. Then, Andy, we both rolled D who goes first, and we both rolled threes. Yes, so that means, of course, that I get to go first, so I can start unloading the guns into the Wood Elves. And you can see that this 
arrow dice on the warriors here represents the Anvil of Doom, bestowing them with an improved armor save. Actually, I think the arrow was representing the lesser effect. If you don't roll particularly high on the spell, the lower version just allows them to re-roll armor saves, I think. And then if they'd got the extra fancy version, which goes on an 11 with the targeter there, then that would be also plus one to their saves as well. Then pushing up, not too far, obviously, because we're going to be mostly firing. The warriors are actually moving up, though, because the, the units that are a threat to me, I feel, are kind of on this right flank. I think that's where you've got your poison unit. So I do want yeah. to get out to them and force them into a bit of an engagement, hopefully. Now, what does the dwarven shooting accomplish in this turn with an engineer close by? Well, we start shooting up these guys. It looks like one or two of them have already been shot off the table there. It's a bit, yeah, a bit of the cavalry, maybe. There. Looks like you shot off an Eternal Guard as well. The cannon does a couple of wounds to the Tree Man as well. Yeah. Which is a good start, bringing that down. And hopefully a, a Tree Man with not many wounds left is a really good target for a Slayer with Strike First, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So those are the casualties of the first round. Killed off a few cavalry. So that's well, good. You. More than half of the uh, Sisters of Thorn, which I was really devastated about because I really wanted to try them out. But um, yeah, three of three out of five of them get shot off. Failed all their ward saves. Unbelievable. They've got four up, so you think 50-50 chance. I'm at least going to save one out of three, but no. All three failed. Die. Yes. The gyrocopter has also made its way up the left. So next turn, it'll certainly be in a position to land here and start dropping that flame template onto yeah, your no, archers. I'm in a quandary. Do I shoot it or do I go for the... Uh, do I stick to the plan and try and whittle down and his artillery and his hammer unit? Hmm. Well, there's the layout of the battlefield at the end of my turn. So if you were Mr. Remington Steel at the moment, you're looking forward to this wall of dwarven steel. You've got a gyrocopter hassling your flank. You've lost a few cavalry models already. Where do you engage? What's your plan? So what is your actual plan in this game? Well, my, my plan now, having already played the game, is to probably take about 20, 30 steps backwards. Um, but uh, yeah, what was my plan? I thought I was going to ignore the gyrocopter. I think I was partly, um, what's the word, a little bit prejudiced because I thought well last game we played the gyrocopter was a bit rubbish so I'm just going to actually ignore him and if he shoots some archers fine I need to take those rangers off there that you see near the forest because they are great in combat being dwarves are very resolute so they're unlikely to run away good shooting as um, well and shoot good shooting as well so as you'd already seen he'd already taken off almost the whole unit without me able to respond so it's like i've got to do something with my shooting it's absolutely vital this turn um and perhaps start moving things up and giving andy more choice of things to shoot so he's not shooting my um you know my shooting units he's shooting the units that are better protected if you like one thing i forgot to show off on my turn which the picture obviously comes later here, is that the organ gun rolled six shots but a misfire which gives it minus one to hit which is very sad that's why yeah. even more wood elves weren't getting killed but this is your response to the gyrocopter you've sent the remaining two cavalry from that unit over here and also the tree man seems to be heading in this direction as well so what's the plan for the tree man here so i was trying to keep the tree man out of range for your shooting um and my plan was was to maybe redirect your um, gyrocopter so it would more likely go towards those if I could get a charge in to the gyrocopter I'd probably take it out easily with the tree man um, but the other reason I moved them out there was so the, um, the Sisters of Thorn could cast their teleport spell and get the tree man right up into your face a bit more where the rangers were and um, do you see what I'm saying there? If I can sort of make it seem as if I'm going away from the action and then teleport him right in, that'd be amazing. Yes, yeah, so if you could teleport down here, that would definitely save the number of turns that you have to spend walking towards the gun line, wouldn't it? 
Yeah, he's only got movement five, you see. So it's not actually that. It would take him almost three turns, two, at least two turns marching to get there. Um, so yeah, that was my plan to try and teleport him. Um, so I, I stuck the two remaining Sisters of Thorns behind the tree man so they couldn't be shot anymore. The valid strategy. The problem, problem is that the spell, you need a 10 to cast it and um, they are at power level 2 so I would need an 8 on 2d6 to get that off. Also, I want it to be out of range of your dispel for that spell. So can you yes. see my thinking there, Andy? I certainly can. There is some thinking going on up there in the head of the <laughs> Remington. Uh, let's have a look at what your archers get done, because there's a photo of them, so they're obviously about to do something. And in oh. fact, they kill three hammerers. Very, very encouraging. So it was minus one to hit them, uh, because they're long range, but um, all of my archers could shoot because they're all on the hill. Yes, a lot of shooting in this game does happen at long range, so it's kind of the default is shooting at long range. So you kind of have to think that of everyone's ballistic skill as being one lower than it actually is. Because most yeah. of the time you will be firing at long range, I think. So they usually need threes to hit because they've got bow skill four. So that would be four to hit. All of them could fire. Um, I've got obviously got a roll of five to wound. But if I get the wounds through, it's minus two armor save because I've got oh, I've got bodkin arrows. So yeah, so hammer is definitely the juiciest target to be shot at in the dwarven list. Yep. And you've got this trio of small elite combat units in the middle here. Yeah. So I moved them up uh, as far as they could. I think I I might, I might have marched them up a bit. Got the spell singer with the eternal guard. I've got the um, the glade captain hanging out with the wildwood rangers, and I've got the shadow dancer hanging out with the war dancers. So yeah, that's the shadow dancer there on the right, isn't it? I think at this point, I thought I should have actually I shouldn't have held them back so much. If my tactic was to get them into combat, why have them so far back? Yes, they're going to get shot at for a couple of rounds, but. Yeah, it just seemed like a very big distance to, to fill. You do shoot off a couple of rangers as well from the dwarven yeah. lines, so you're thinning the ranks a bit. Yeah. And you've got your other cavalry, the ones with poisoned attacks up here. And what's this? A big gap on the hill where something used to be. It's almost yeah. like you've poisoned the cannon to death. Yeah, <laughs> so I've... I've um... So I've moved those uh, Glade Riders up, and even though it's long range, because it's on a hill, I can see it. So it's forced to hit, and there's eight of them, so hopefully I'd get some sixes. I wasn't expecting to roll three sixes, but I did, and that was enough to take out the cannon. Um, perhaps in hindsight, I should have took out the organ gun, but I I'm not sure if I could have reached that. I'm not sure. Oh, they're both um, legitimate threats to you. Yeah, but the other reason I, I put them there, I was hoping Andy would try and charge them on his turn with those dwarf warriors. And if he did, I would do a fire and flee, which means I can get a shot off and then sort of run away. Yeah, and those tiny little dwarf legs, the distance they are from your unit, they're probably not going to catch you if you do that. Yeah, and if he did that, then he would hopefully open up um, the wild riders, because then do a flank charge. Yes, you've you've there. killed one Iron Drake as well, so it's quite an even start. The Wood Elves have killed more points in the first turn, but of course yeah. you've now entered short range of some of the dwarven weaponry. Yeah. So. So we're going to head into turn two, and this historically this turn two is when you know in Age of Sigma as well is when all the action really happens I think yeah so if this turn of shooting for the dwarves can go swimmingly then hopefully there won't be too many wood elves left for another turn still got the miners to come on as well don't forget about them so on to yeah. turn two for the dwarves so a bit of repositioning and I feel like I don't think I actually charged with this unit because it was too far I think away. I did. I think you might have failed to charge, though. Oh, did you, I didn't charge the unit that could fire and flee, I think, though. All right. 
and uh, this unit you'll notice is dead. Uh, they were shot so, to death. So he destroyed the wild riders with one round of shooting. I think that was was that either the organ gun or the anvil of doom. It could have been the thunderers as well, or the anvil. Yeah, just lots of shooting attacks, whittling down your numbers. A couple of models oh, dead from this unit as well. So he's got like 160 odd points, 154 points off the table there. So I, I was devastated at this point. I was like, after turn one, I was thinking, oh, this could be pretty even. And, and which like, which unit is this oh here? Is they're fleeing? So they were eight glade riders, and five of them just got shot off as well. Yeah, so they're running for the hills. And look at those casualties. So that is a lot that's been annihilated in the dwarf turn. And no real combat started. The, the gyrocopter gets into position as well, as I said. Now, because of this Warhammer World hill, it's actually supposed to be a bit closer to them. But this is an old metal model, and there's no way I'm balancing it on this slippery bit of terrain. So it does drop a template on them. And I think two of them with that first yeah, not a huge amount of damage done, but it did some damage. And more yeah. importantly, it's got out of the arc the charging of these units here. Now, if this cavalry unit were skirmishers, they could just charge off wherever they want, so they would still be able to charge the gyrocopter. But alas, those ones are not skirmishers. Yeah, There's a, they have a rule called fast cavalry. Do you know what that is, Andy? I don't know because dwarves don't have it, but. <laughs> I could look it up. You certainly could. So you can see the Wood Elves, they've been whittled down, they've actually killed some entire units, others are fleeing, the Miners have come on up here as well. So what my plan was with the Miners, because I thought that charge was a bit long range, so I was thinking if I attempt to charge with the Warriors and then a unit runs away, the Miners would then be closer to them, so I could also attempt to charge on something else with them, or on the same unit, and then if you flee, which way do you end up going? But it was going to be quite complicated, and the distances were too big, I think. So it would have made everyone painfully slow. Uh, so I didn't end up declaring a lot of charges. You can see I've put my Slayer out in front a little bit. I'm looking for the right time to throw him into something. I don't think I'm going to be able to wait for the Tree Man, who would obviously be his preferred opponent. I'm going to put him into something that can't stand and shoot and just kill him immediately before he gets to strike. And mostly I'm quite content sitting back and shooting, even with the loss of the cannon. So that was quite a successful turn for a number of models killed, but the Wood Elves are going to be able to make some charges probably this turn. So let's see how that goes in Wood Elf turn two. So the Tree Man looks like he's gone to hide behind the woods, so what's the thinking with Mr. Tree Man? So I think this is just panic mode now. I, um, I see how devastated his shooting was, and if my wood had my Tree Man been in the middle, I'm no doubt you would have took those three wounds off him. But then perhaps my wild riders would have survived. So out of my two, what I think are my best units, the tree man and the wild riders, one of them's already gone. And this one's half dead. So yeah, it's panic mode. Hide be hide be I get out of line of sight and get in the wood if I can. Yeah, I've got some charges off though. The war dancers go straight into yeah. the legendary dragon slayer in all his yeah, naked glory. I suddenly felt quite good because now I was getting these guys into combat, which is what they really must be doing, the war dancers. And while we're here, you have to admire my sculpting ability. That Slayer butt. Oh, is, what is it not? Is it not supposed to be that? That is not his natural butt. I've enhanced it with green stuff <laughs> a decade ago. And I, well, I think that still looks quite good. It definitely makes for a larger target for my war dancers to slice through, and that's exactly what they do. But we've got more charges being attempted here. And I don't think you actually make the other charges, do you? So you end up just moving closer, or you, maybe you just chose not to charge these ones because it was quite long range, so you thought you'd just close the distance. And I think you were also hesitant to charge the hammerers in the first place, knowing that they get plus one attack when you do charge them. Yeah, and my Eternal Guard, and three of them have been shot down already. The Eternal Guard, they um, they can fight into two ranks if they've been charged. Yes. If they charge, they can't. So, my Eternal Guard is a, a good unit to have, you know, be attacked, if you like. So, I was sort of baiting Andy there. I think my thinking was that Andy would charge into the Eternal Guard unit 
I could hold them up for just one round, then my wild rangers, wildwood rangers could come in with my glade captain and my war dancers after finishing off uh, big butts there could either flank charge the hammerers or go for a mad charge into the thunderers. Yes, so let's see how that goes. Well, the war dancers make short work of Mr. Big Butts, the legendary slayer. Do you lose any war dancers in the process? Uh, it doesn't no. look like it. No. Yeah, so very depressing times if you're a slayer. He's yeah, dead. I think, I, think I, I killed him with my um, shadow dancer. I did a heroic killing blow there, so... Yeah, I think you did, actually, because doesn't your shadow dancer have strike first as well? Yes. Even yes. though he's got a great weapon, he still strikes first. Yes. Uh, so no, he hasn't got a great weapon. He's got the Spear of Loic. That's it. Sorry. A couple of other things have disappeared here. One Thunderer has vanished, which was shot off by somebody. Well, it could have been the Glade Captain, who is the one with the big banner. Um, he's got an arrow shot. Um, I must say at this point, after two rounds of my shooting, that my Way Watcher hiding in the wood that you can't see, um, you know, he has, he has three shooting attacks. And... He kind of needs twos or threes to hit and fours to wound. I missed everything. Like I failed to wound everything. I was really devastated because he can pick out. Um, he's called. He's got an ability called Hawkeye Archer. So he can he can pick out champions and characters within units. So I thought, why don't I shoot that engineer on the top of the hill, which would then mean that his organ gun might misfire. Um, he killed some rangers as well. I'm down to seven rangers, so I think, is that another one dead? Yeah, so that was obviously the glade guard shooting there. And yeah, thunderers may have been shot. One of them might have been shot off from the glade captain. I did manage to rally my, my glade riders. Um, I think my way watchers did nothing. Yeah, they've, they've been whittled down a bit. And your archers on the hill are still looking quite healthy, and you've chosen not to turn and face the organ gun. Uh, you mean the... the uh, yeah, the gyro cups, that's what I mean. They are yeah. facing the organ gun. I think you were shooting at the rangers, probably, and that's what did the extra kill. Yeah, Would you? what would you have done with them, Glade God? Would you have turned to face the... Uh... Well, knowing that it's got a, a flame template, I would have definitely been tempted to try and take it out, or maybe send something to counter it that can charge off in a kind of 360 and isn't reliant on its front arc, like a skirmishing unit. Mm -hmm. So that would be a good counter to someone that's trying to get around the flanks. Now, one one little thing I think I've done wrong, uh, probably out of many things, but one thing I noticed is that war dancers are a skirmish unit, so they're open order, so they sh probably shouldn't be on a movement tray like that. Uh, you you could put them on one, but it's not necessary. You could just have them on bases like my rangers are. Right. And it also means that you don't get certain bonuses attached to being close order. Like, plus one to combat resolution and such. But you but can also just charge off wherever three, you like. It does mean they've got a 360 charge arc, yeah? Yes, if you're skirmishing units. You're not bound by which way you're facing, really. Yeah. And... On to turn three for the dwarves. So let's see if we can strike a decisive blow and bring these wood elves down. So the flame template, look at that. Six murdered archers. No matter how well they're painted, they're still dead. And the gyrocopter is doing the work with this template. And flame templates, actually, because they don't have a hole that you need to center on a model like you do with catapults now, uh, the ability to position that template a bit more freely means that you can fit more of them guaranteed under the template, which is very important now, so they're not only hit on a 50-50 dice roll. So the flame templates I'm liking in this edition compared to the round templates. And then the rest of the shooting, of course we've got all this stuff, including the anvil shooting attack, completely destroys the unit that you had right here that had rallied so you've, that cavalry unit is completely toast yeah and what's this another unit that's disappeared yeah that was the anvil of doom i believe um just killed 10 wildwood rangers no problem yes so it's got a good roll on its uh, spell and killed that's them all an, that's another 158 points just gone without me even seeing 
them do anything. So that, at this point, I must have felt, I felt really disheartened. It's only halfway through, what's it, turn three? I thought, I've lost this battle. <laughs> and in combat, or well, without combat actually, you can see that my dwarf warriors have decided that this side of the table isn't worth their time anymore. All your threats are over here. It's not actually yeah. quite as bad as it looks because you've still got a tree man hiding over here somewhere. So still got you... a tree man, so there's something that there, I think, if 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 it were if the anvil weren't there, I definitely feel like I've got a slim chance here. But we have got some gives it automatic hits with strength four to, against my toughness three. It's just I don't know, unassailable. But we have got what, some what, combat what, going now though, because the hammerers yeah, might... have got into the war dancers. Yeah. And the um, rangers have got into oh, what are these guys? Eternal guard. Eternal guard. Yeah. One thing I do like about Warhammer Fantasy is that you, you can't shoot units that are engaged in combat so that's the one reprieve i do have yes and we're gonna see what happens as a result of these combats now you can see that i buffed up the hammerers there and we've got a challenge going as well so the anvil yeah. gave them the ability to re-roll their saves which is nice now the the hammerers have a special uh, ability a special rule where any one of their infantry any one of the hammerers can offer up a challenge yes so you're effectively feeding me uh, a model you don't really care that much about against my unit champion uh, which sucks but yes because I you won that first one because you might have wanted to direct the attacks from one of your characters onto for example a character I've got like a king or my champion yeah. So by issuing a challenge with just a regular hammer, I deny you that opportunity because if you turn down the challenge, you just get sent to the back rank and can't fight at all. Can you only issue one challenge per yes. combat then? Yeah. So hammerers are pretty tasty for that. You do have to be careful though, issuing a challenge with a single hammer. Because if the enemy has a particularly powerful character, they can get the overkill, which does spill into the combat resolution. So something, yeah. something to be wary of. And... Um, so there's that, but I have quite a lot of attacks going on because I charged. Oh, did I charge or you? I charged I think... you this turn, but look what's going on here. So you went first still because you've got your elven reflexes and high initiative, and you oh, rolled a, a, you rolled some wounds. But what's this? On the, the new old world dice set, needing three rolls of a six to save my hammerers' lives. And that, that, that was game changing. At this point, I'm already disheartened. If I'd have killed these three more hammerers, I, I may well have won the combat. You certainly probably, I think you would have won the combat because I would be striking back with not very many models. So I think you probably would have won because you've already killed the champion there. Uh, no, it wasn't your true champion. Cause, uh, oh, you're not the champion. champion. Yeah, you killed with your champion. You killed one hammer with your champion. I really wanted to kill him and his champion because he's obviously got an extra attack. Um, and if, I, if I'd have killed all four off the front rank, it would just mean he only has one attack and then his, his king is able to attack. Yeah, so there's my reaction to the triple six armor saves. Um, what, obviously what thrilled. It? If anyone's in the chat, what are the actual... Yeah, there you go. That's my face. Disheartened. Unbelievable. Like, that's rather a good photo, Andy. Well done. It, I mean, it sums up what, your attitude towards a triple six being rolled on the armor saves quite well, I feel. What are the statistics of rolling, needing three sixes and rolling three sixes? Uh, I would have to get my maths brain on for that. But it's, I think it's, it's some, like one in 180 chance or something like that. It's because rolling a double six is one in 36 chance. Yeah, so rolling triple six is like another six times 36, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so it's a big number. <laughs> and that's the face that it spawns when you roll a triple six. I mean, it's pretty incredible. I still mustered a smile there. Unbelievable, Andy says Stu. It was unbelievable. I mean, that for me, that was just like, I'm never going to win this game now. But there you go. That's what you play this game for. It's for moments like that when you can when you can roll three sixes on loaded dice. <laughs> and then, what happens then? The 
war dancers break and flee, the hammerers then overrun and crash into the Eternal Guard. Now, at this point, because it's only our second game, we didn't realise that actually, because that combat hadn't been resolved yet, the hammerers could have actually fought again. But we didn't realise that at the time, but we are aware of that now. So but if... Added, what, they could get another round of attacks in you? If you overrun into an enemy unit that's in combat, but the yeah. combat they're involved in hasn't been resolved yet, then you can attack ah. again. Wow. Yeah, so you can get a bit of a domino effect if you line up the units correctly and pick the order of them fighting correctly. Wow. So That's that could have been very devastating. As it was, though, because we didn't do that, the, the, the rangers actually ran away. But the hammerers are still there, so you can't pursue through an enemy unit that hasn't I mean, fled. I have to admit, though, Andy, another thing was, you know, you roll three sixes, and then I, I have to roll to um, to see if I break, because I, I lost the combat. Um, you know, I've got leadership eight, and my general's nearby. And you think, the chances are I'd probably roll under my leadership. But well, neither of us took a battle standard bearer for this battle, and they're obviously important for re-rolling your break tests. Yeah. And, yeah, on average, units shouldn't just be running away willy-nilly until they become horribly outnumbered, and at that point it becomes very likely that they run away. Yeah, and it was doubly, doubly uh, sad for me because my best fighting unit, the Shadow Dancer, is in that unit of War Dancers, so he ran away with them. Yes, so it's not the end of the world for the Wood Elves, but it's looking bleak, and they're now nowhere near engaging this gun line on the hill. So it's not looking good at all. So let's see what Remington can pull out of his uh, Wood Elf hat in this round. And I also should point out that these dice that I left there to mark the turn number, you kept picking them up and rolling them. <laughs> so we almost lo lost track of which turn it was at various points. Well, at, this, at that point, Andy, I just wanted to roll any other dice than the ones I've been rolling. Yes, so you do rally the war dancers, though, so they will be able to get oh, yeah. stuck into the fight again. Oh, yeah. Okay. I forgot that. And look at this. So you might notice that the rangers are all gone. Yeah, so I did. Um, I charged my tree man into the side of the rangers, managed to get the charge off. Yes. Man devastated them. Well, they were they fleeing. They were yeah. fleeing already. So when you charged them, they fled, but you reached them with your charge because they only rolled a very tiny number to do an additional flee. So you just caught them and killed them with your charge. Yes, I caught them with the Sisters of Thorn because they have movement of eight. Yes, yeah, so the rangers are dead, and suddenly it's not looking quite so obvious what's going to happen here because you've got two decent units here looking into the flank of the gun line. So it could yeah. be about to get interesting. I mean, it's, yeah, I think I'd, um, if it was if it was my movement now, which I've just already moved, but if I could get that treatment, that'd be great getting those hammerers or getting them thunderers. My plan here was to maybe even use that teleport spell, but then we realized you can't charge after the teleport, which kind of sucks, because if you could, it'd be amazing. It, would, be, it would definitely be too amazing, I think. Yeah, so I couldn't do that, um, but I thought maybe I could, if those Sisters of Thorns survive another round, um, I yeah. could get a charge into the War Machine then and, and sort of tie it up and stop it shooting me. You also get some shooting off from your lone character who's just been chilling out in the deployment zone and kills another Iron Drake. Yeah, that was his first kill. So um, if I just look at the points value of uh, the Wade Stalker, 131 points, and he's only killed one unit of... Um, killed a single model. Single model, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so not the most impressive performance, but you have got your skirmishing unit out on the flank here, out of the arc of the miners, so they're not going to be able to charge you, so I'm going to have to shoot that unit to death. Mm. And you have now realised, after the gyrocopter has dropped the flame template twice on this unit, you're going to turn around and you're yeah. going to shoot it. Uh, yeah, or I'm going to try and, you know, meet a charge. Yes, and you've also whittled down another Iron Drake, which obviously means they need to take a leadership test now. Yeah. And in combat here, you've got some casualties and a hammer casual casualty there as well. Well, 
the eternal guard are destroy uh, are running away there with the spell singer i think oh is that the uh, unit running away and this is the war dancers yeah it's two separate yeah, units so there where, that could have been from shooting and that's, why they ran. that's how it looks so you've got rid of the rangers so that's a decent threat gone uh, the rest of it's still not looking too healthy for the wood elves but you're in a slightly better position than you were now that you've got these units finally getting into the game so yeah what can the dwarves the do then way watchers on the far right they're, they're pretty useless out there it's just uh, there's not a lot for them to do on their own against these big blocks so maybe it was them that killed an iron drake so that would be a job for them trying to finish off that unit yeah, into I, I think i might have shot a thunderer as well i got one one of your thunderers off the table i think yeah that was earlier and on to turn four for the dwarves so dropping another flame template and I think the remaining two or, two or three archers choose that they're going to run away. And they're so close to the edge of the table, they're going to be gone soon. So the gyrocopter really getting its points worth here. Gyrocopter I think, um, is... I might have had a, had a go at shooting it, but it just didn't do anything. Yeah, I think you did a stand and... May have done a stand and shoot, or actually it may have been too close for you to do that. Because if you're within their movement distance, then you can't... The, yeah, in their move characteristic, you can't stand and shoot. But the gyrocopter is only 60 points. So against a unit like this, that is really good. If you're up against cavalry with a gyrocopter, not so good because you're not going to be able to fit them wholly under the template. So you're only going to hit them on a 50-50. It's only strength three. So if you can get this hunting down a unit of archers. I mean, that's 18 Glade Guard worth 234 points. And it's just literally shot off. And the three remaining ones uh, run away. And um, I can't rally them. Yep. So that's good news for me. The Thunderers turn round, because they're obviously about to be charged by something. And you can see here that all my shooting from on the hill has taken down one of this unit. And I don't think I've put any more wounds onto the Tree Man though, so that's not great. And then this unit here, I think I, I think failed... I saved my, used my ward saves, and my ward saves actually worked for once. And I think the Anvil failed to cast the magic missile this turn as well, which I would have liked to have put onto this unit to try and get rid of them before they finish off the Iron Drakes. Everyone else is just moving into position to try and contribute to the game a bit now. Now you might be thinking, Remington, why don't you try and shoot that Anvil? Because it's causing you no end of problems. Problem is, it's like seven wounds, toughness five, Ward save. Well, the Anvil of Doom is five wounds at toughness seven. So yeah, you would very much struggle to shoot that off unless you have a lot of poison attacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would yeah. not be ideal. It has Gromril armor as well, so that's nice. So what's, what's Gromril armor? Is it re-rolling once? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Then in combat... Another hammer or two get killed, but then the war dancers get squashed, like the pathetic elves that they are. And you can see in the background, you can see them running away. The rest of them. You can see here, by the way, that yeah, I think a couple of them did successfully run away. Actually, so they weren't totally wiped out. But you yeah, can my see dancer wasn't wounded or anything, but he ran. You can see that the anvil fully buffed up the hammerers to have plus one armor save and re-rolling. So that's why only two of them got killed, even though the Wood Elves are going first. So and the thing about Warhammer Fantasy Magic is that you can you can cast magic in multiple phases, can't you? Yeah, so wizards are much more potent, potentially, than yeah. they used to be. I mean, in, in the old rules, the Anvil, I think, would only be able to choose, would have to choose one of those spells. Yes, so you can right. affect many more phases of the game with wizards now. And you can so also... You can effectively cast three spells... In one in one turn, I think the anvil. Yes, I think it can cast three. Yeah. I'd have to double check on that, but I think it can. And yeah, it's looking pretty good for the dwarves. The wood elves are definitely scattering in the centre, and this tree man needs to do some serious work to turn this round now. So let's see what he can do. Let's run to turn four for the wood elves. And first things first, uh, there's going to be some shooting going on. Trying to blast away at my hammerers. There. Yeah, that you unit rallied. You have rallied your units at the back there. War dancers don't rally or can't rally, so they're they're still running. But who's this guy? Because he's now into combat with the organ gun crew. So this lady, I have you know, this oh. is sister of Thorn. She manages to make a long bomb charge into the side of the organ gun, 
and because it's the unit champion, she has two poisoned attacks, uh, and the stag gets a, an attack as well. So yeah, you could definitely yeah, kill that know. crew, and then you're onto the engineer or the anvil or a flank here. The yeah. tree man, I, I just I don't know if you failed the charge or you didn't make one, but I think it was just a failed charge into the thunderers. So you didn't yeah, move very point, far. If I'd, have, if I'd read my rules properly, I would have had to strangle root attack, and that would have probably, possibly taken out a third or half of that unit of thunderers. Or if it's getting towards the end of the game and you think you want to finish off a unit, you've got iron drakes over there that you could be looking at, because you're a large target, aren't you, so you can see over my units. Yeah. And then there's some more shooting trying to whittle down the hammerers, so I think another one dies. But there's still a strong unit with this many bodies in it. And the Wood Elves are really struggling to make a dent in the Dwarves at the moment. Yeah, I mean, just if you're interested, the Strangle Root has multiple shots, D6 plus 1. Minus 1 armor piercing, strength 5. Or is it strength 6? So, yeah. It, that could have been good, definitely. You do manage to kill a crew member from the Organ Gun in this combat. So that's a start. Yeah, I think she fluffed her attacks. Um, and the the stag killed. I think that is exactly what happened, yes. And moving on to turn five for the dwarves. Yeah. So what are the dwarves going to do now? We're going to unload the thunderers into the tree man, yeah. probably. Yeah. The organ gun is in combat, but the anvil is not. So the anvil is going to be trying to kill something as well. Other than that, we don't really need to be adventuring too far out. The miners feel kind of lonely. They entered the table and... Everything they wanted to kill is now dead already. And this unit's we just... didn't need them. Yeah, this fair, unit's really dancing did. around hiding from them, so they feel left out. The warriors haven't even engaged in combat yet, or been shot at. So they haven't taken any casualties. So they're kind of milling around in the middle as well. So let's see yeah. what happens now in the dwarf turn. So the hammerers are trying to chase you down. Yeah, it looks like I've lo you've took a wound off the tree, man. Yes, all the Thunderer shots did do a little bit of damage. The Warriors are in position, so if you want to charge the Thunderers, maybe they'll be able to flank you. So they may be able to do something, and the Miners would be a good choice, because they've got great weapons, and the Hammerers would be a good choice, but they are nowhere near fighting the Tree Man. The Gyrocopter is dropping its template and just trying to kill what's left over here, the Stragglers. It's like the moment in Warhammer Total War when the enemy's fleeing and you just want to finish off as many of them as possible before they leave the battlefield. So you're chasing them down yeah, with your flyers yeah. and just trying I to. I think you might have. You might at this point you might have fluffed your shooting attack with the anvil, or you you were out of range. I'm not sure, but I don't see any casualties there. Yes. And what's um, this? A tree man in combat. It's about time, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sure you probably did a stand and shoot, but maybe it didn't do anything. I think I may have been, t you may have been too close for me to stand close. and shoot. Yeah. Yes, too close. So that was great. I really wanted to see how the tree man are doing with that. Uh, and if you can <clears throat> go back a photo, Andy, you'll see my glade captain. Um, yeah, my glade captain there with the standard next to those hammers at the top there. He decides to, well, I'm going to turn around. I'm going to try and take out that annoying gyrocopter and get that glade captain with the great weapon and the spell singer and the one remaining eternal guard um get them just take off some points because i, I can't take out them hammerers no way let's Especially see how it goes if I charge them and he gets double attacks now in terms of embarrassing moments for a wood elf yeah. would you say being elite cavalry charging into a war machine crew and being beaten to death with their barrel cleaning stick. Would you say well, that's top of the embarrassment list? Uh, it's got to be up there for certain, but I've only got one wound and uh, I've got no saving throw, but I do have a four up ward save, which I failed yet again. Yep, so murdered by the organ gun crew. Obviously, if you had a full unit going in there, it would be a different story, but alas. And does this make, because I killed one of your crew, is the organ gun harder to shoot if you lose crew members? No. All right. So you could have one surviving crew member and, and it being fully functional. I think so. You do have some issues if you lose all your crew. If you lose all of them, obviously, it's just gone. 
but I don't think it's like the way it used to be in Warhammer, where if you lose some crew, you can't fire as frequently. I don't think there's anything like that anymore. Well, that's going to change, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's this? You've killed a miner. So shot one of them down. I've killed a miner with my Waywatchers, so... <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> and, well, this is a bit more successful. So the Thunderers take significant casualties from the tree man there. Nice. I think you've killed four, because one of them was already right. dead. And they obviously do nothing back. And you're in combat with the gyrocopter, and you've done a wound to it, I think. Or maybe two wounds. Yeah, you've got one wound left. Yeah, so on to my turn six. And how's this going to go? Well, the anvil. The rune lord strikes the rune and brings down a chorus of lightning that just <laughs> obliterates your flanking unit there. Completely murders them. And got the warriors and the miners coming after the tree man. But I think at this stage we realized actually it's essentially game over. And there's not uh, much yeah. there's not much anyone can do. So we're just blasting through the end of this game, seeing if the tree man can kill anybody. Doesn't kill enough thunderers. You do kill the gyrocopter eventually in combat there. Can't you kill can off the up. hammerers. The 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 way the um, war dancers run off the table with a shadow dancer. Um, my way watcher who's hiding in the forest does a uh, a feigned flight or something like that. Gets back and he shoots against Andy's king, and who has two wounds left. And I managed to get another wound off him. Yes. Um, because I've got Hawkeye Archer so I can pick him out now there is some controversy in the community should Andy get a lookout sir attack and if so he would it would be unlikely that I could shoot that king I think um, because that's your specific special rule that says you can target models within units hmm. I don't think there's anything that negates that but I haven't heard about any controversy surrounding yeah. it so I'd have to look into that more closely I mean, it, it would. It, it, what narratively, it would be brilliant if Anders obviously almost tabled my army, but in a final shot, as I'm fleeing away, I managed to take out his king. That would have been nice, would, wouldn't it? it? It would be. Yeah, it would give me something there. So there's your final shots. The tree man lives. Got a couple of well, a couple of wood elf stragglers. Charge there, though. Yes, a couple of wood elf stragglers around the place, but not a lot. And the dwarves are still looking mostly the same way they started so i mean how not to play wood elves maybe how not to barrel how not to volunteer yeah. to set the terrain up would be another way of describing it <laughs> or like um and his easiest game ever just sort of stand there just shoot everything so what we're obviously learning as we play this game because there's no reason particularly for the dwarves to venture out into the battlefield if they've got shooting supremacy then the Wood Elves need to find ways to engage on their terms or find ways to make the Dwarves move. So, the hill's obviously an issue, and it's very unlikely to be hills in deployment zones in this game. It's not going to be a particularly common thing. So, positioning units behind other units so they can't be shot becomes valid because they can't necessarily be seen. And other things... Can they be that... seen if you're shooting from a hill, though? Yes. Nah. Other things that you could be doing against an army like this is, obviously you, you want more spellcasters, you want high level spellcasters so you get more of the good spells, you want to look through the spell laws that you can take and see if you've got any ways to put up barriers to line of sight for instance, or any any spells that would lower enemy toughness are going to be very yeah, important. Yeah, great point, and that's why I took my spell singer with Illusion, but she was only level 2, I was hoping to get off Column of Crystal which I could plonk right in front of your war machines to make them not not be able to kind of target me. There are other things you can do as well. Obviously, you've got... I think your tree man causes terror, doesn't he? It causes terror. Definitely causes fear. I didn't seem... We didn't, maybe we've, yeah, it causes terror. Yeah, so what you can do, if you've got any spells that can lower enemy leadership, or if you've got any magic items that could lower enemy leadership, that could be a good combo with terror. Because then if you try and charge me, I would then be fairly likely to fail a leadership test if you've lowered the leadership. 
and then would have to yeah. run away. I mean, the thing is, I don't, I don't want my judgment of the game to be too clouded, because I've only ever fought dwarves with my wood elves, and dwarves are kind of anathema to wood elves because of their high toughness and they have better shooting. Yes, so, so I would say the the lists we chose. The Dwarves have the tools to deal with your units, because Wood Elves are very good at staying away, staying out of range, firing and fleeing, but the Dwarves don't want to chase after you anyway, so you can dance around in the middle of a field all you want, they're still going to shoot at you. So if you were up against big combat blocks, they would find it way more annoying to deal with your little flighty units that just do precision strikes and then bounce away again and start dancing. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to flying units, you might think, oh, you know, next time maybe Rem take some Warhawk riders, but um, or take an Eagle. So I've got an Eagle model, so that that might be an option. Get some flying units in there, but they're not that powerful. So well, anything you've got that anything you've got that flies that can get into the enemy shooting, that can get behind enemy lines, force them to turn around. If you've got shooting units, you can bring more poison units that can be useful for dealing with not only war machines, but the other high toughness units as well, yeah, including the anvil. Throw, don't you, with poison. But if you bring enough of it and you target the right units, yeah. you've also got the ability to take more skirmishing units, which are harder to hit with shooting as well. Yes. So if you and Ambushing units as well, maybe. Yes, ambushing definitely, because if you can ambush behind a gun line, it's going to be way less effective and it's going to force the dwarves to maybe deploy some of the fighting units at the back instead to deal with any ambushes. Yeah, I'm definitely not jaded to the point where I don't want to play again. I'd love to give it another go, tweak tweak my list. Uh, I think Way Watchers are rubbish, really. Um, and maybe get more blade guard but not in one big unit have three four different units of glade guard um scattered around the table so you know if i if i do lose a unit it's not it's not the end of the world is it i think the yeah, most imp magic. the most important thing is to have more magic i think yeah more magic maybe even bring a dragon i don't know that could be dragons are also extremely powerful in this game and they're way less likely to get cannoned off than they used to be in the old 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 world yeah. So dragons I mean, definitely the way to go. More wizards, more level four wizards, and I love my war dancers. I could bring more of them in. Uh, Wildwood rangers. I think I probably have to try them again, but they just they got shot off, so it's hard to say how. Yeah, it's work. there's not always going to be hills, so you'll be able to hide some of your fragile units behind screens as well to avoid them being shot. And yeah. with with your wizards, the anvil of doom is the main dispeller for the dwarves and it doesn't move so if you can stay out of dispel range of the anvil then you can do some serious damage and also it's only a minus one or two on your spells when you're targeting dwarf units so if you're doing things like putting down a vortex in the middle of the table that's not going to be an issue you're not going to have any negatives applied to that or buffing your own troops for example if you could if you've got any spells that could give you armor bane or extra strength or anything like that you'll have to look through your spell laws and see what options yeah, you have i haven't got anything that gives me extra strength um but yeah there are ways like plague of rust spell i can reduce you can give give you a minus two rend on your armor that's kind of cool that could work really well with hag bane poisoned arrows couldn't it i suppose yes um, um just just forgetting rules as well like forgetting the strangle root missile attack that was massive because I could have definitely depleted um, some more of your worries there, but also my Shadow Dancer forgetting to cast the Hammer Hand spell. I think I might have tried it once and I didn't get it off, but that's that's another D6 strength for something like that. Uh, um, sort of that could have took out some hammers there as well. Maybe changed that combat because if you if you look at that, that hammer unit if that's off the table then not that scary an army indeed Although the warriors are still there so yeah. so for the next game we're definitely going to improve the terrain so wherever we play we're going to make sure that we're not relying on the crummy warhammer world old world terrain and i might actually send them an email or something as well and tell them hey 
your terrain's not actually that great for the old world. Maybe you should look into that. Especially since I think we were the only people playing there who were playing old world. So this is the best they could come up with for a game of old world. <laughs> Another thing I forgot was to use the law of Athel Lauren, which is my wood elf signature spell law. And what that means is that I can replace, say, a battle magic spell for my natural law of Athel Lauren. And the reason why is because they have a, a, a signature spell is tree singing, range of 15 inch. And that's a blast template. And it means that um, it becomes dangerous terrain for your units to move through. So, I mean, although you did negate that with the hammerer's rune, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, you put yeah. Rune on your hammerers so that. Yeah, the rune of dangerous. hesitation, so you don't get charge bonuses against the hammerers. It's quite powerful, but it's also oh. expensive, that. So, yeah, if I could put a big template, dangerous terrain, it means your movement, your your warriors are kind of stuck. If they want to move... Then yeah, the hammerers had the move through terrain ability because of the king that was in there. Yeah, what if that counts for dangerous terrain? I think it just lets them move through all terrain freely like a wood elf. Because there are times when you would be taking a dangerous terrain test in this game. For example, if you're charging through the woods, yeah, then you could just drop dead. If you're a dwarf, it could definitely yeah, happen. Well, you roll a d6, don't you, on each model, and if you roll a 1, they lose a wound. Yes, so check out your spell laws. If you Also, if you've got anything, what used to be really good against dwarves was forcing them to take initiative tests with some, some of the spells. So was it, was it, back in the day, was it the was it the dwellers below? That yeah, spell? amazing. Was that the spell that made you take an initiative test? Yeah. Yeah, so if you've got anything like that, it's worth just having a browse of all your spell options and bringing more wizards, definitely. More wizards, more poison. And this is only when you're tailoring against dwarves, obviously, but more magic is just universally good, I think. Magic yeah. and a dragon seem to be the go-to. They're going to be good against pretty much anybody, not just dwarves. Because you're not only ever going to play against dwarves. Yeah, I did enjoy the combat rounds a lot. Uh, yeah, the combat is fun in this game. I think it's more fun than the old version. I like the more the wider variety of outcomes of combat because it's not just we stay here or you run away and die. There's yeah. more there's more shuffling back and forth going on. There's more decisions to make even if no one is running away, you still have the choice of whether you follow them up or what do you hold back because maybe one unit has charge bonuses and the other has charge receiving bonuses so there are yeah. a lot of things to think about and that makes it less of a quagmire isn't it you know yes you should get bogged down less in this game i think the rules are less encouraging of massive unkillable uh, steadfast blocks if you remember 8th edition that was a big deal steadfast so if you had a massive unit with loads of ranks, it was very, very difficult to chew through it and kill it. Now, Andy, I don't know if you added this to any of your units, but um, you can make units veterans or... Um, what's the other one? Is it Drilled. Yeah, did you use any of that stuff? I did not, but that is an option on some of my units. So one of them allows you to uh, redress the ranks before moving, including before charging. So if you have a, a wide open space with hammerers, for example, and you want to get way more attacks, then you can load up the front rank before you charge. But obviously you need the space to do it, so it's not necessarily practical to deploy that way. But if you have the option to redress your ranks before moving, you could also go into the marching column as well, which would mean that you can move triple speed. Just... Which is great for dwarves. I mean, would, maybe you should have done that with your warriors to get them in. Well, there was, the warriors didn't feel like they needed to be a factor because I think the shooting was doing enough. They were there to protect the shooting. Yeah. But it's well, definitely an option. There are going to be times when, even though it's dwarves, the enemy will have something that I will want to get to to shut it down because it's going to be more of a threat at range than I am. Whether that's other dwarves or just armies that also have powerful shooting. So there will be times I want to move up. So moving potentially in a marching column could could be good. Also, the anvil has the ability to let units move again. So if there are times I'm really desperate for units to get into the action, then that can be brought up. 
in that situation as well. And they couldn't help noticing, uh, you know, at Adepticon, they teased out the new dwarf line, the new old dwarf line. Is there anything in there that you want to add to your army? Well, as a matter of fact, there is. Now, we've talked a little bit about this now, but we should do just a normal Andy and Rem show at some point as well, so we can go into all the releases and pre-orders. But immediately, Slayers. Slayers and the Goblin Hewer are things that I'm immediately going to be ordering. Yeah, they I brought back the, uh, the Metal Slayers, haven't they? Yes. Yeah. I also like the regiment of the is it a regiment of renown, the ancient the, the ancient eighties dwarf unit, the Prince Yeah. Prince Ulthar's Imperial Dragon Dwarves or something like that. Yeah, so I'm yeah. definitely gonna get those as well unless they're prohibitively expensive. Yeah, they, they will be expensive because they they're, they're selling one box as a command and another box as as a troopers. Yes. Um so it's very elite where the old box set, you've got something you know, you've got something like 20 of them. There are some other dwarf units that I would eye up as well. There's the new King on Shield Bearers, which is very cool. Amazing model. So I may well get one of those. And uh, there, noticed... Go on, sorry. there are some war machines that are also gaps in my list. I don't own a flame cannon, and they're bringing that back. But it's not the really old flame cannon. And I like to have one of each of the old war machines, in which addition to some of the new bringing? ones. They're bringing back the one that's kind of got a dragon's face on the barrel, rather than yeah, the one that, have that model. rather than the one that looks like a giant ale barrel. Yeah, it's that. Which looks weird, but it would fit in with the other war machines that I have. So I've got the old oh, yeah. the old bolt thrower that looks wooden, the old grudge thrower that looks wooden, the classic organ gun. You Even the, the hewer, the goblin hewer. The goblin hewer, I would very much like to get that, but it depends on the price. But it's one model I always thought looked really cool. And it wasn't around when I was playing. I think it came out during the period when I wasn't playing Warhammer. Yeah, so same. it would have been between 2004 and 2012, sometime then. Uh, I'd like to know what it does, really, the Hewer. Yeah, because whenever people have used it, I say recent years, but it's not actually that recent anymore. People were using it with the organ gun rules in 8th edition. Uh, okay. Which seems fair enough, because it's a similar kind of thing. It's firing out a lot of shots. But hopefully it gets its own rules in the special dwarf book that's going to be coming out. Yeah, I suppose you'll be getting that then. I suppose I will, because it would add to my collection of all the previous dwarf army books that they've ever released. Yep. One thing of interest, maybe, is that the uh, the new Slayers as pictured, or the, the old Slayers that they're bringing out again as pictured, don't all have red beards anymore. Yes, so maybe they're copying legendary slayer Alric Bigbutt, who of course has half of his beard green. Yeah, I kind of like that. I think with the with the fire slayers in Age of Sigmar. Yes, they so probably don't want don't to step on anyone's beard. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, we'll have to talk about all this in more detail and look at some nice pictures on a live stream at some point soon, so people can yeah. keep their eyes peeled for that. And you might be wondering before we finish up, is you know, are these the only armories you've got, guys? Is you really got wood elves and uh, dwarves? Well, I actually have a dwarf army, and uh, I also have an empire army I can field, and I also have a a goblin army I could field. Um, yes. If I, can, if I can find my goblins, but now I'm currently missing in action. I do have other armies as well. I do have an old Vampire Counts army, which is mostly Mantic models. Yeah. But they are on individual bases, so that could definitely be used for the old world. And I'm also very slowly working on a Bretonian army as well. So I've bought loads of them, but I've resisted the temptation to assemble the whole army because I'm still working on the Dwarves. I've got other projects as well, so the Bretonians are going to be a very slow project. Hopefully, yeah. once they're on the table, that'll be even more armies. But I would, like to, I would like to give the Undead a try at some point. I think one thing we've definitely learned as a tip for any of you guys building an army is that just work on one at a time. That's what I've learned. You try and, like a kid in a sweet shop, bit of this, bit of that, you'll just never finish anything off. Yeah, I, especially for someone like me, I find assembling miniatures very easy to do, very easy to get motivated to assemble. Get the whole army stuck together, primed, and then it sits on the painting table, and then it's very intimidating after that. Yeah, bad move. Just do one unit at a time. You also devalue it horribly. So if you eventually decide, actually, this army was a bad idea, I can't commit enough time to finish it. So when you then try to sell it, you get much less for it because you've messed with it. 
So if you keep them in the boxes until you're ready, and then if you do decide eventually, okay, I could do with the money because if something even cooler has come along, or just I'm never going to get round to this army, then you're going to get your money back, or in some cases more than your money back, if they're still yeah. in the boxes. So that's our red hot tip for this battle report. Don't oh, assemble oh, an entire oh, army unless it. you're ready to paint it. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll get another one out in a maybe a couple of weeks. Um, yes. We'll see if the Wood Elves can get revenge. Or Iwenge, as the Spanish say. We sure will. I'm also hoping to do another battle this week at some point as well. So you'll see that on the channel, everybody. So don't forget to check out the links in the description. Uh, Facebook group, Twitter, Discord, and all that stuff. And, Mr. Remington, would you like to say goodnight to the people? Good night to the people. Yes, don't forget to like and subscribe as well, obviously. Thanks to everyone that's been chatting along in there. And all that remains to be said at this point is... Good night out there. Whatever you are.